Last week our friend Joe went out with few of his new friends for dinner. He surely had a great time, but wait, there's an issue. A cute little friend is quite shy with girls and doesn't know how to behave when his female friends are around. Due to this reason, he ended up with an awkward look in each and every pic they clicked that day. To avoid this awkwardness in the future, Joe has decided to list down all the possible ways he can avoid being next to a girl in the picture the next time they make a dinner plan. Well, we definitely cannot make him better with girls, but we can surely teach him some lessons about permutation and combination. There has always been a huge confusion among the people related to the difference between permutations and combinations. Let us try and understand it first. We are sure many of you all are well aware of the Premier League format in which 20 football teams compete each other to win the title. Let us consider a similar type of competition with 10 teams where the top 3 teams win the first, second and the third prize respectively. So in how many ways can any 3 of the 10 teams win the prize? It's quite clear that the position of the winners matter a lot in this case. Assuming that all the 10 teams are equally capable to win the prizes, here's how it breaks down. Starting from the top, there are 10 contenders to win the first prize. Hence, the first position can be occupied in 10 different ways. Let's say team A wins the first prize. Now we are left with 9 teams that can occupy the second position. So the second position can be filled in 9 different ways. Here, the first two positions together can be occupied in 10 times 9, that is 90 ways. Because for every 10 ways of filling the first position, there exist 9 ways of filling the second one. Now assuming team B won the second prize, we have 8 possible ways to fill the third position. Hence, as we go on filling the next positions, the number of teams we are left with is decreased by 1. So, in all, the 10 positions of a competition can be occupied in 10 factorial ways. But wait! We are just concerned with the first 3 positions for the prize distribution. So considering the possibilities of the first 3 positions, the first, second and the third prize can be won in 10 times 9 times 8, that is 720 ways among the 10 teams. Now that's nothing but 10 factorial just without the last 7 numbers. Mathematically, to get rid of those extra 7 numbers, we can simply divide 10 factorial with 10 minus 3 that is 7 factorial. Therefore, in general, if we have n items in total and want to pick k from the total in a certain order, we can do it in n factorial upon n minus k factorial ways. Such a set of possible ways for which the position of each selected item matters is called permutation. Now consider the same 10 teams competing each other. But this time, the competition is all about qualifying into the next round. The teams that finish in the top 3 positions can continue to the next round. Here, the order of the qualified teams doesn't matter. Therefore, in this case, the extra set of possible ways which arose due to the variation in the positions must be discarded. In our case, we have 3 choices for the first position, 2 choices for the second and 1 choice for the third position among the 3 qualified teams. So we have 3 times 2 times 1 that is 3 factorial ways to rearrange the 3 qualified teams in the first 3 positions. But since for qualification, the positions of the qualified teams doesn't matter, this 3 factorial is the number of redundancies in our case. Hence, to find out all the possible set of ways 3 of the 10 teams can be qualified, we just create all the permutations and divide it by all the redundancies, that is 720 upon 3 factorial, that is 120 ways. Hence, in general, a set of possible ways of selecting k items from n items in total for which the order doesn't matter is called combinations. So Joe, next time be prepared. Or maybe he doesn't need it anymore. But y'all stay tuned, subscribe to Tequila and thanks for watching.